Hello, welcome back. Uh, we're doing another die scraper video. I am Temple Enigma, and uh, this time I can actually see the video screen as we're playing here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of running through the map, making sure every piece works correctly still. Really want to make sure the elevator didn't get screwed up. Plus I just like to screw around on my map. and As much as I like to forge, I like to delay time too. So in today's episode, we're going to be working on the bottom room here. I don't know how long my running spree is going to last. Now I did record this in, um, here we go. I did record this in theater mode, so if I, my guy's ever just floating there for a second, it's because I am selecting a piece because the menu does not appear in theater mode. Um, the rest of this video, at least, will pro these videos at least, will probably be in theater mode, just because it's easier for me to not have to hook it up every single time I want to work on it. So uh, obviously, um, that's me trying to figure out how to get these crates in here. So I'm gonna have to phase them in. Uh, which I didn't really mind all that much since it did kind of work out in the end <clears throat> So what I want for the bottom of this map is I want it to look destroyed. This is like the storage center for all the um, For the map basically this is like your basement This is where all the things are going to be stored in and that crate right there You will see I'm going to turn into a random weapon box and I will explain how I'm going to do that later. Well, semi-random weapon. Up to eight random weapons that I choose. So, uh, anyway, all I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of setting up some debris, uh, some destruction kind of stuff. I'm gonna phase this crate to the ground. And um, what's nice about the bottom floor is I don't have to worry about things going through the floor and affecting other levels. Uh, one of the big things I have trouble with is when I'm, like let's say working on the third floor, and I want to put a piece of debris, I can't put it through the floor or it's going to appear on level 2. So that's a big challenge when it comes to making levels uh, and level design. So, you got to work around that. Now down here, um, I only have 10 crates to use. Uh, technically 9 because I already used one for the elevator. So I'm going to be adding some rocks and probably eventually some barricades. I don't do it in this video. So what we have right now is I'm placing these rocks down to kind of just simulate more destruction. And I'm going to be putting a red light inside. There, wait, wait for it. There, oh, wait, terminal light first. Forgot about that. Um, just to make it look like a piece of it collapsed and there's some debris. And I'm, pro I'm going to add some more things with it but then we have this flashing light effect and I'm gonna come back around here gonna what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up the lines of sight and now I'm gonna start working on this crate here but first I'm going to run through the map um, it is not possible to get in that which is good because it's just supposed to be a crate you can hide in this crate but can still be snuck up from the back that's just a little piece I'm just checking and see how everything flows with the map making sure you can hide behind but still work nicely with everything now I am locking all the crates so that they cannot move. Um, well, I'm putting them on fixed, rather, so that they can't uh, be pushed around or anything like that. And now we're going to start working on the random weapon box here. So I'm going to be putting an extraction crate, or extraction cylinder, right in front of here. And um, if you know how the Nazi zombie maps work, then you'll know how this works. So what's going to happen is this extraction cylinder is going to be put here. Now I put two over top of each other and that's going to run into some problems later, but for now I don't know that because I'm, apparently I'm uh, uninformed about things. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up these extraction crates, their uh, colors and respawn settings just for fun. And then the goal of this is you're going to throw a grenade in there, it's going to destroy the extraction crate, you can walk through and pick up a weapon that spawns back there or whatever I choose to have spawn back there. So I'm putting this shield door in front so that um, you can't actually shoot it and this is me testing to see if you can shoot or melee it. So it's going to take me a little while to get this just right. <clears throat> Excuse me, no yawns this time by the way. Oh, just kidding. Anyway, um... <sighs> Lost my train of thought. Okay. Anyway, this is me just still testing. Um, I can't shoot it. Can't shoot it. Um, now I can. 
um, I'm going to be disabling jump in front of this so that you can't just like jump and shoot or anything like that. Although, oh damn, it's starting. Um, the yawning epidemic. Um, so I'm testing out like the shield or orientation and all this stuff because I want to make sure you can't destroy these before I work on anything else. Uh, but, um, what else while we just sit here and watch this general channel news, I guess I'll just run through right now while we, while I work on this stupid little door here. Um, I hope you're enjoying the Minecraft videos. I'm going to be putting a lot more of those out. I'm still going to resort back to Halo, Call of Duty. Um, I'm going to start trying to put out some Call of Duty stuff. I have to admit Black Ops 2 is not my favorite game in the world. Um, and you'll see I finally figured out how... Well, I can't remember. I think I finally figured out how to make it invincible to shooting. But anyway, uh, Black Ops 2 isn't my great the greatest game in the world for me. Uh, just because I don't... It's not as good as Modern Warfare 3 in my opinion. But anyway, back to this. So now you're, what you're going to see is I'm running into trouble getting these to explode. Um, I put that wall back there to simulate the wall that's going to be against... Um, the back of that crate. <sighs> Man, I'm tired today anyway. So, anyway, um... And I'm just chucking grenades here, trying to get this to explode. I'm wondering if maybe there's, like, an issue with it, or... Like, see, I can melee it closed and all this stuff. So I thought, okay, um... At this point, I'm thinking, well, what if I... Maybe I'm not... It's just not hitting, or what's going on. Um... So I'm going to decide here in a minute to actually try to put a landmine or a fusion coil back there. Thinking maybe there's a glitch in the grenades not having enough damage or anything. So, um, we have our fusion coil here. And I'm going to be putting that right in the back. Uh, phasing it right through. So that just kind of chills there and you can detonate it still. Well, you'll see it detonated and nothing happened. So, I'm getting really upset at this point. Um, this is really the portion of the video that took the longest. And it turned out that it's because the two were crossed over each other, it wouldn't explode for some reason. And I don't know why, it just wouldn't do it. So, I'm waiting for it to respawn. And well, I do. <sighs> Jesus with... Damn it. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for it to respawn right now. Um, I'm gonna... I think I end up leaving... Because I think I'm too... Oh, yeah, I end the round because I don't feel like waiting that long. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up the system now. So I'm just going to adjust the cylinder so that it kind of sits in the middle. And I lock it. And then I'm going to throw a grenade again. And now you can see I can easily pass into the crate there. Alright, so the next step for me is to prime the... The next three steps are the ordnance. There's the ordnance random drop. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if putting a random drop will drop a random weapon, or if nothing will happen. So, I think nothing happens. <sighs> but, um, I'm not really that sure. So the next step is to put a soft kill so that they can't just hang out in there and wait for the next ordinance drop. And then the third step, third and final step, will be to put a trait zone in front of the crate so that they cannot jump and shoot. Because I want them to have to waste grenades that they can get in personal ordinance and possibly ordinance around the map and stuff like that. So the pretense will be, you'll throw the grenade in, you'll go inside every 15 seconds, because uh, that's the shortest ordnance can spawn. A new ordnance drop will spawn in, and the extraction crate will have already blocked the door at that point. <sighs> and there is a soft kill, so that people can't just sit in there and wait for the next extraction, or the uh, next uh, thing, whatever that is. So, uh, we're almost wrapping up here. We're at 9 minutes 40 seconds right now, um, out of a 10, 32, 22 video. I got nothing else to talk about at this point. Um, 
So, uh, anyway, this is just me testing it out for some reason. I haven't adjusted the trade zone settings yet. Just still making sure everything's working out nicely. Um, do I ever adjust the trade zone settings? I have no idea. Um, no, apparently not. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you later. Bye.